prepare the law students so that when you complete your legal education, you go to a courtroom, you have a fair idea as to how to conduct a trial to present the case of your client in a courtroom. So that is called to hit the ground running. It would also do you well to know the difference between a mock trial and a moot court because moot court is fairly common in the law colleges today. Mock trial do not take place as often. The main difference is that a mock trial is a simulation of how a matter is taken up by a lower court. So it is disposal of a matter by a lower court. Whereas moot court relates to only the advocacy, the two lawyers who speak. So it practices them in how to address the court to put across their matter before the court. On the other hand, mock trial shows how the evidence is led before a court. And obviously this also includes how to address the court, how to respond to the court. Therefore, you would appreciate that the object of a mock trial is to help the students or litigators with the trial preparation. And it would help lawyers to learn different methods of leading evidence before a court. Now, what are these methods of leading evidence? I'll just uh, give you two very simple exam examples. In one case, the accused may plead in a criminal trial, an accused may plead guilty, which means he accepts his guilt as opposed to another situation where the accused says that he is not guilty and then it falls upon the prosecution to prove to the court that the accused is responsible for the charges that have been framed against him. And therefore, this is done by introducing the audience which is watching that mock trial to a trial court setting and thereby give them clinical education to lead evidence at a trial court. If you are a lawyer, either for the prosecution or you are an advocate defending the accused, then how would you lead the evidence before the court of your case? Therefore, it would become obvious to you that before you start doing a mock trial, it is expected that you would you should have read Indian evidence at that course you should have completed as part of your law degree in a law college. Apart from the Indian Evidence Act, it is also desirable that the participants must have studied the procedural laws. What it means that if you're doing a mock trial relating to a criminal matter, then you should have a fair idea about CRPC. And in case if the matter pertains to a civil dispute, then the civil procedure code and likewise the concerned branch of law. For example, you want to do a mock trial relating to a property matter. So you should have an idea about the law that governs that property. It is advisable that all law schools, the faculty there should prepare a plot bank. Now what is a plot bank? Plot bank means like you have number of moot problems where the mooting activity takes place in your law college. So similarly, you should have number of plots relating to different situations, criminal matter or a check bouncing matter or a family dispute, a dowry problem, traffic accident. 
so you should have those plots or stories ready so that you can start the action to stage a mock trial which are the laws that you can practice by staging a mock trial there can be a wide variety of laws but some to ignite your imagination are on the slide in front of you for example it can be a criminal matter whether it's a simple theft or a fight where hurt or grievous hurt has been caused uh so a criminal matter there can be a situation involving family law domestic violence or uh any dispute under the negotiable instruments act it could be a matter where a consumer uh is unhappy because of the deficiency uh in the service performed to him under the consumer protection act it can be violation of a copyright so you can have a mock trial to depict a violation or infringement of copyright or maybe there is a dispute differences between a landlord and a tenant the rent control act maybe that your application initial application seeking information under the rti has been declined and you have to go in appeal so if you have to go in appeal before the designated officer you should better practice that by a mock trial it can be where a worker has been denied the gratuity which is admissible to him and he goes before the competent officer under the payment of gratuity act a uh, uh, difference or a dispute falling under dowry prohibition act like that there can be any number of situations on which a mock trial can be held and in the series of lectures after today we would try and stage some actual mock trials in front of you now since it's a trial there are number of actors or participants in the trial obviously it would uh, be apparent to you that for the sake of simplicity and the time is limited you do not have uh, unlimited time so therefore the number of participants should be kept to bare minimum it should be a simple straight forward story that is the matter of mock trial therefore it is desirable that uh, the minimum number should be restricted there has to be since it's a trial there has to be a judge or a magistrate presiding officer there have to be minimum two advocates because there have to be two parties to the dispute minimum uh, keep the plot of that mock trial simple so that you do not require more than two or three witnesses for each side and if it's a criminal matter you require an abhiyukt or an accused against whom there are charges and he is facing a criminal trial so you require these are the participants or actors in a mock trial trial judge advocates witnesses and accused uh, as i said earlier select a story which is called plot here which should be simple and brief which not more than two or three witnesses on either side you do not want a long drawn matter which become boring and more than that it takes lot of time so like a faculty or a teacher selects what it wants to cover in one session or in one period that is assigned so similarly here you have to keep the mock trial story short it is also necessary and you have to bear this in mind that by just seeing one mock trial 
maybe that the mechanics of trial settlement would not become clear to you. And therefore, it is desirable that a number of mock trials should be planned by a society or in a law college, uh, taking proper care that they should be in a sequence. Now, what does it mean that they should be in a sequence? It means that, say, for example, start with a simple plot involving a theft or involving a physical scuffle where there is an injury cause or a grievous injury cause. And like that, you proceed. Then you go to, say, criminal breach of trust or extortion and so on. And progressive learning outcome. You must decide that in number one mock trial, then number two mock trial, what are the lessons to be brought out? Just to illustrate to you, uh, you may first decide to have two normal witnesses. And in next stage, you may say, okay, now I want supposing if it is a child who has to lead evidence, who has to be examined. In the third, you may say, okay, now we require an expert witness, like say, for example, handwriting expert or where a postmortem was done on a body where there was death involved. So how an expert witness testimony is to be taken. And your aim in that manner should be to slowly build the capacity of the participants, I mean the law students, so that ultimately at the end of their five or three years degree, they are able to confidently enter a courtroom with a clear idea as to what is happening and they are not shy, they are not hesitant, they are not unsure as to what happens before a judge or a magistrate. How do you decide the plot? To decide that formulation of a plot, first you have to make up your mind as to what are the lessons to be highlighted. What we have to bring out. <coughs> Secondly, thereafter, based on the lessons to be highlighted, for example, you have decided that you want to show a simple matter involving theft. So in the next stage, you decide the effects of a simple incident involving theft, where immovable property, where the movable property of a owner has been taken away without his consent. So this is how you decide the facts of the case. Obviously, in most of the cases, the accused, I'm talking about criminal matter now, does not agree that he has done what is alleged in the charge sheet against him. In other words, he's saying that he is not guilty of the offense. Therefore, he will have some version or his side of the story. So you write down as to what is the prosecution version and what does the other side, the defense says. And then, fourthly, you insert some grounds for objection and challenges. Now, what could this mean? I'll explain this. For example, you may have read in the Indian Evidence Act that a leading question is not allowed. So you insert a ground that while the examination in chief is taking place, the opposite lawyer will object and challenge a question on the ground that it's a leading question. Or it is not an evidence because this relates to opinion of a person. So there should be <coughs> some scope for objections and challenges. 
while we are proceeding with the lecture i would uh, like to tell you again that if you have any question uh, you please write it down and contact the organizers at the end of the lecture we will take up whatever are the questions and doubts clarifications now just to help you how should you plan a mock trial i have on this slide indicated a few suggested themes for example uh, in a marketplace or in a residential area supposing there is a clash uh, because of parking space and that leads to uh leads to thing in injury infliction of injury or there may be a case relating to vehicular accident there may be a situation based on domestic violence where a newly wedded wife was assaulted at her in-laws place there could be a different situation relating to where a check has bounced under the negotiable instruments act <coughs> maybe there is a case of uh, use of unfair means in a university campus during an examination so the matter goes to the controller of examination or to the proctor whosoever is the disciplining authority and uh, the lawyer is permitted to lead evidence even if a lawyer is not allowed the student has to put up his case then he should have an idea as to how to present a case and a mock trial is needed there could be a situation involving um, prevention of corruption act where a police officer say for example has demand, demanded and thereby succeeded in taking a bribe uh, you would have read the bar council of india act uh, rules and the advocate act so you would be aware about the disciplinary committee of a state bar council so there may be a situation involving disciplinary proceedings for professional misconduct or maybe that uh, there is a matter where a consumer is unhappy and he has complained about deficiency of service inadequacy of service Uh, and uh, the matter falls under the consumer disputes act some more incidents uh, it could involve a chain snatching which is not uncommon these days uh, maybe under the rent control act where the landlord wants to evict a tenant on any of the specified specified grounds uh, to illustrate maybe non payment of rent or there is a violation of copyright you have written a story or a poem or an article which somebody has plagiarized so it falls under the uh, copyright act it could be a contractual matter say you gave the contract to somebody to white white wash color wash your flat and the fellow has not done in the time or in the manner which was decided so it's a breach of contract so like this there can be any number of situations that you decide and you hold mock trial and more mock trial you have witnessed and participated the level of confidence that would be there you would increase and it would help you in settling down Uh, as a litigator if you want to get into law practice you want to go into law teaching you will be able to give examples to your students while you are teaching if you want to be a judge it will give you confidence to settle a matter so therefore for any law students mock trial is going to give you enormous ben i spoke earlier about uh, uh, where an information under the rti act has been denied and you have an opportunity to file an appeal 
show rejection of application uh, the appeal is heard and it is decided in a manner akin to a uh, trial you could practice that or uh, like denial of gratuity or other benefits to the workers uh, under the relevant labor laws so this these uh, last three four slides have depicted a whole range of diverse matters on which mock trials can be held and i'd like to clarify here that it is not only the law students who would benefit from a mock trial even once you have gone into practice and a new type of matter has come and you may like to have a mock trial in your chamber when you are already an advocate to visualize different situations that may come up when you go to the courtroom and you want to gain confidence to handle those situations confidently so therefore even as an experienced advocate uh, it is not uncommon that you may like to in your own chamber do a mock trial to deal with different situations now here uh, just to indicate to you i have gone ahead and written a complete plot on which a criminal trial can be staged by way of a mock trial uh, they were uh, twin brothers ram and sham both were good cricketers uh, they had a neighbor by the name naresh he is also a good batsman but uh, he plays for a rival team <coughs> as opposed to ram and sham i thought the situation would be better because you are having as on today india playing against australia in the one day international so i thought let me bring to you the plot where there is cricket involved now while the two teams were on ground one day a discussion broke out between the two teams and this was based on an umpiring decision uh, naturally the decision appeared favorable to one side and not to the other so it led to fisticuffs that broke out and uh, this argument discussion leading to fight the umpire and the organizers uh, they saw they were privy to the discussions that were taking place on the ground but they decided not to change they stuck to the decision and this decision was in the favor of ram and sham's team this boy naresh who was their neighbor by temperament he was uh, short uh, prone to short temper so he decided he was not happy with that decision so he decided and made up his mind to teach a lesson to the two brothers he says i'll sort them out so one of his teammates in naresh's team was peter he borrowed a hockey stick from peter and then subsequently naresh and peter uh, they found ram and sham alone uh, during a situation when there was nobody else they attacked them with the hockey stick the narration peter they beat the twin brothers badly ram sustained a fracture on his elbow and sham received severe injuries on his legs and thighs now when we are talking about fracture and severe injuries obviously it implies that uh, the medical aid was uh, sought and uh, taken the matter reached the police it was a criminal case both the brothers who were victims they had to face and undergo hospitalization for 6 weeks now you would see why i have kept 6 weeks because if you see the definition of grievous injury it has certain implication there what differentiates an injury or a simple hurt to a grievous hurt and fir was lost narration peter were both arrested 
they could later secure bail and uh, the medical opinion was sought it said that the injuries were caused by blunt hard object that is how the medical report usually says it will not indicate that it is hockey stick which is used it will say that it was a blunt hard object which caused led to the injuries now when this scuffle and a fight was taking place the assault was taking place there was a boy uh, amit who happened to be present there he had seen the victims being waylaid and thrashed by narration peter so on one hand you have the two brothers ram and sham on the other hand there are two accused persons narration peter and there is independent evidence in the form of version of amit now narration peter were both brought to a joint trial for causing grievous hurt to ram and sham you can have a simple charge sheet so that it does not complicate and prolong the mock trial so say mock trial can be staged on this or similar situations now you would require a judge or a presiding officer at that trial to do that role you could invite a serving or a retired judge or a magistrate or maybe a police officer advocate they can be invited they can be requested that sir please come and help us by sitting down as the presiding officer that is the judge or magistrate at that trial because uh, a mock trial as the name indicates is where there will be two conflicting sides so there has to be in a court in a trial setting there is... apart from that you would also require you should you may like to take help of a faculty who during the trial like a commentator can intervene as and when required to highlight or comment on any aspect of the mock trial and to bring out common mistakes now this is very important because you have framed a plot you have designed a plot and there are two sides they may do a deliberate or un unintentional error during the mock trial which if it is not commented may give wrong lessons so this can be done by a faculty who teaches that branch of law who can where required intervene to comment or highlight like i gave an example uh, of 6 weeks now the 6 week has an obvious bearing on an injury which is converted from simple hurt to grievous hurt or a fracture now this role of a moderator can be done by a faculty if you can manage to get the services of a judge or a lawyer then they can be invited and selected to do the role to perform the role of a moderator at that mock trial now you know the story which is the plot so that plot can be distributed that okay this student will be sham in that matter that can be ram this fellow will do the role of a uh, naresh the fourth person is peter then you have somebody who was the bystander uh, his role somebody can be called in as an expert witness a doctor or a medical officer who had uh, examined the patients and uh, seen the injuries and so you can give the role and assign the character to the participants and then the organizer or the moderator can give them their story their part that this is what you will speak 
then this question will be put to you during examination in chief. Then maybe that this would be the challenge that it's a leading question. So this is what you would reply. So all this plot has to be prepared. And that is what makes it interesting and makes it beneficial too. How do you prepare for the mock trial? So plot and the relevant documents. Now, what are these documents? Uh, in this case, which I just painted the situation, Ram and Sham, uh, the charge sheet will be a <clears throat> relevant document. FIR will be a relevant document. Third uh, document could be the medical examination report. Now, these will have to be prepared and they will have to be dished out. They will have to be uh, <clears throat> issued to the participants in advance. So maybe that you give them seven days or a week, five days in advance so that it helps them prepare their participation. Uh, if a student or the participant doesn't understand, then suitable guidance can be rendered. That's okay. So that when the trial is a stage, mock trial is a stage, then the fellow there doesn't start asking, Ki, sir, abhi kya kare? what is to be done now because he was not prepared for this. So avoid that situation. You cannot write down all the facts in the plot. So you give liberty that certain things can be included and they can be assumed. For example, the match was on a working day or on a Sunday. It was during the morning hours or afternoon. Now this really may not have a direct bearing. How many spectators were there when the match was taking place? So <clears throat> such facts can be assumed by the parties. Obviously, any facts which have been assumed, that party should, before the starting of the mock trial, should disclose to the opposite side that, well, this was not written in the opening papers, in the mock trial papers. So we have assumed that the hospital was at a distance of two kilometers or they were uh, first went to this doctor and then they went to the hospital. We have assumed this. So, well, this, if you have assumed it, tell this to the opposite side so that they know it. And as long as uh, they do not directly hinder or disturb the mock trial that you are going to stage that day. It's very important that you do the time planning because this mock trial is not like a Netflix um, sort of episode that will go on from day to day, day to day, like that. So therefore, you plan <clears throat> based on the purpose of that mock trial that we will do it, say, for 60 minutes or 90 minutes. My suggestion would be that no mock trial on a particular day should exceed 90 minutes so that it is able to retain the interest of the participants. It should not become boring. Decide beforehand that what lessons are to be highlighted. Now, what are these lessons? Lessons could be that today in this mock trial, we will show three different ways how examination in chief should take place. Or the second lesson is how to contradict a witness by way of cross-examination. Or what is meant by corroboration of evidence. So you write down that kya sabak sikhana hai. What are the lessons to be highlighted in that mock trial? Or how the evidence of a child witness is to be taken? How the evidence of a handwriting expert is to be taken? So you write down that in this session, what lessons are to be highlighted. 
at the end of the mock trial you keep a few minutes for the question answers because you do not want the spectators who are watching other students to disturb the mock trial progress you are not going to stop it the drama will continue but at the end of that show keep some time for question answer because maybe some participant or a spectator may have a genuine question which should be clarified now just to help you in time estimation uh, say for example any mock trial would involve opening addresses by the two sides what are these opening addresses so the lawyer who's on the side of prosecution say the matter relating to ram and sham so he will say that your honor this case relates to a fight that took place or that was the root cause in a match leading to subsequent attack by the accused person on the two victims now the main persons in this case were ram and sham who are twin brothers on the other hand there was naresh and his friend peter ram and sham belong to one team and they peter and naresh played for the other team the genesis was this umpiring decision the next day after a planning uh, peter uh, naresh who was short tempered who could not reconcile get over the humiliation of the adverse decision decided to teach a lesson so he roped in his friend peter got a hockey stick and attacked ram and sham when he found them alone and they inflicted very severe injuries on them which led to their hospitalization now the evidence relating to this incident on which this is the fir and this is the charge sheet i may be permitted to lead now this is the opening address similarly when the case for the defense comes so the defense will say that your honor my client here are peter and naresh i would like to show that yes while i agree that uh, the differences took place during the match but uh, my clients who are the two accused persons here they were not involved in any attack and it was dark hours their faces were not clearly seen and because of the earlier animosity they were blamed so this is called opening address so both the sides are entitled to give an opening address you give 5 minutes to each and tell them that keep it you can you are not allowed to exceed 5 minutes so total it takes 10 minutes then depending upon the number of witness for each witness under the indian evidence act firstly exam in chief takes place it is followed by cross examination and then re examination so one witness examination in chief 5 minutes for two witnesses it will work out to 10 minutes cross examination of one may extend to 10 minutes similarly 15 for two re examination so like that you have to plan that one mock trial where there are just two witnesses will take how much time and if the time is getting exceeded then you may decide to cut short some part of that story because your aim is that in one period or in 90 minutes the mock trial should be complete so you have to it is important that you carry out time estimation and stick to it do not violate the time estimation how can you save time obviously number 1 by having simple plot and straight forward questions you don't go around the bush so you ask direct questions 
and the question should be simple you do not require a preamble directly what did you see who was the first one to attack how did naresh hit ram or out of ram and sham who was attacked first did he keep standing or he fell to the ground so like that you ask simple straightforward direct questions there may be that some objections are raised or challenges made to the testimony now it is expected <clears throat> that the presiding officer should immediately give a decision because it's a mock trial you can't say okay, uh, today's case is now postponed to next week when the presiding officer will decide whether the challenge is admissible or not so this head in advance to retain interest and to prolong the mock trial it is important bear in mind that at best it can go into up to 3 sessions of 60 to 80 minutes each but your effort should be that you finish preferably within two sessions of say 60 minutes each keep the story simple Uh, i have already explained this earlier that essential documents like first information report charge sheet uh, initial complaint or post mortem examination or a medical examination report etc can be prepared <coughs> they are like a mock trial and supplied to the participants at the start of the mock trial so that they are clear about their case now what all can you practice the first mock trial first few mock trials that you do you should also keep in mind that if the court the magistrate or the judge there asks a question from the lawyer how he is supposed to answer to him how you respond to the court questions you inculcate and remind the participants the need to be concise and brief if a question is asked directly answer that question and do not go around the bush by giving a long story or examples the judge is quite intelligent he will understand so respond to his question directly you should also have the capacity to think on feet if the judge asks you a supplementary question what is a supplementary question he says okay injury took place on the hand or on the leg so your answer is let us say in the hand so supplementary question is which hand right or left or which portion of the hand so this is a supplementary question you should have competence to <coughs> respond to that therefore be concise be brief therefore you would appreciate that a mock trial will give you a training in how to address the court how to examine the witness and it also equips you with different uh, with the way to deal with the different types of witnesses for example a child witness an expert or a witness who turns hostile you would have read that under indian evidence act how to deal how to face a hostile witness it will also teach you and prepare you how the evidence can be corroborated because somewhere in indian evidence act you would have read that evidence is not to be counted but it is to be weighed it is you do not require a certain number of witnesses to treat a fact as proved that it only when 20 witnesses will say then you will say that the fact is proved so it is the not the quantity but the quality of evidence that matters and how to contradict a witness 
include aspects like refreshing memory how can you refresh memory how to contradict a witness uh, highlight the law relating to a leading question what is a leading question what is the opinion what question may be labeled as irrelevant what evidence would be inadmissible how will you build confidence confidence is gained by facing a situation therefore carry out rehearsals before a mock trial carry out one two three rehearsals and envisage think about and be prepared for various contingencies that may come up during a trial so if you thought about it then you would be able to derive better advantage from that mock trial in the end of this session i'd like to tell you that uh, the mock trial remember it must always in the end conclude with the summing up and the summing up will be done by whom obviously by the moderator which will highlight the lessons learned and they should terminate uh, with question and answer sessions to clarify doubts of the participants now at this stage i come to the end of my presentation i'll be very happy to take on any questions that you may have to further clarify priya please carry on uh if any of the participants have any question please type them in the zoom chat box please type so we have one questions one or two question uh, can i ask yes sir yeah yeah please uh so the sir first question is uh, uh sir is relating to jag why there is no increasement in seats of jag entry how we can clear our jag entry jag jag advocate general yes sir jag they are asking why there is no why there is no increasement in seats yes increase i have not understood yes sir firstly it has got nothing to do with mock trial but nevertheless since the question is asked i'll answer it but why there is no increase uh, can increase. you explain this question i have not understood oh uh, yes sir uh, why there is no increase uh, in seats of jack entry jack entry you see you must understand i'd like to tell you that there is a um, restriction the size of the army uh, that this would be the size of the army navy and air force and within that numbers the size means number that say the size of the army will be 10 lakhs 1 million now then it is decided that how many will be soldiers for infantry armored corps engineers doctors logistics person and the smallest portion of the army the smallest portion of the army is the judge advocate general's department jag department so the size of jag has been decided and based on the wastage that okay there are 200 officers so out of 200 10 are retiring next year after that next year 8 will retire then 15 will retire or will resign this is what is called wastage rate so wastage rate is decided and based on the size and wastage rate is the induction or intake and in intake also now there is women entry so you say okay so many boys and so many girls will be taken so supposing that for a particular year the induction is 8 and the policy is that okay we will take five boys and three girls so obviously from complete country all over india you can only get five law graduates boys and three girls who would ultimately enter the jag department 
we can have a separate lecture about the jag entry yes, but right now yes, i'll sir. be happier if there is a question relating to mock trial yes sir so the next question is whether attack done by naresh over ah. ram and sham will attract offense of attempt to murder under section 307 of ipc this depends on you i said aim is to teach how to conduct a trial so you want to have a trial relating to on a charge relating to murder or attempt to murder it's up to you you decide facts आपने कहना है ये स्टोरी हम अकबर के बारे में बना रहे हैं या जहांगीर या जवाहरलाल नेहरू तो जैसे आप प्ले करते हैं स्कूल में नाटक या ड्रामा वन एक्ट प्ले करते हैं तो आपको अनारकली को दिखाना है या आपको झांसी की रानी को दिखाना है यू डिसाइड दिस आई वाज जस्ट ट्राइंग टू एक्सप्लेन टू यू इट वॉज अपोथेटिकल सिचुएशन that this is how you can do the mock trial so it is up to you you want to have attempt to murder right change the situation and say ki usne laathi pe nahi hockey stick se nahi usne chure ka istemal kiya and he particularly aimed at a vital organ of his body at his heart so his intention was to kill him to murder him you say that कॉर्पोरेट एक्ट you will not find any bear act saying ke corporate act now the corporate means the laws which relate to which impact corporate sector now maybe it is electricity so you take a situation relating to a dispute on electricity whether consumption of electricity or generation of electricity it may be a labor situation trade union it may be uh, relating to provident fund or gratuity it may be like i said copyright it may relate to taxation that will also be corporate so you do more practice on different types of laws concerning to corporate activity it will help you to become a confident corporate litigator next question sir shujata wants to ask uh, the question sir, by her herself any answer, yeah any answer priya sir, if any answer yes, i give if there is a further need to clarify ask me okay sir sure uh, sir, next uh, uh, sir can can i unmute uh, uh, shujata she wants to ask the question yeah please yes sir yes, shujata what is your question so my question is uh, like you have given one witness was found uh, and he he uh, like when that particular witness uh, is produced it is in the first trial itself the uh, witness has to be demanded to be produced or the police has to find out or the advocate has to search for some kind of witness how is the actual trial goes no uh, very good question thank you you see no two criminal situations are similar uh, in law enforcement the police uh, is taught they they know it that as far as possible a crime which is planned in advance no accused would like his crime to be seen by anybody he would try that nobody comes to know his identity or nobody sees him doing a thing but he may not always succeed so there may be he was thinking that he would attack the two brothers when they are absolutely alone and there is no spectator there is no witness but there has to be uh, there came to be somebody who saw so this supposing 
supposing if there is no eyewitness still a matter may be decided based on circumstantial evidence here we are practicing how to lead evidence before a court so you decide a mock trial story or plot story is known as plot so it entirely depends on organizers of that law college of that society as to on what do they want to practice so there may be a witness they may have decide to go on a situation where there is no witness and then prosecution will have to show by way of circumstantial evidence next uh, if any of the participants have any question please raise your hand i will unmute them one by one they can raise their hand or they can type in the chat box here i would like to tell you uh, first of all i'd like to compliment priya that she herself as a law student and she has taken the initiative to organize this mock trial that shows tremendous amount of entrepreneur uh, ship uh, spirit initiative confidence courage and uh, i will try to show you actual two or three or more mock trials so that today i have only told you what is a mock trial but i'll try and when we are ready to show you a mock trial by this virtual mode so you can see how it is done yeah any other question yeah sir ah yes sir i want to ask one thing uh, for a mock trial uh, uh, what's regarding... your name sir my name is ayush mittal okay ayush mittal go ahead yeah sir i want to ask uh, i have pursued as a ipr law in post graduation i was completed my intellectual property right law post graduation from indian law institute so basically uh, i want to know that mock trials will really uh, like uh, will really uh, work in ipr and media law also in media laws and entertainment field no i yes ipr you have done from ili now yeah. it next question is that what do you want that knowledge which you have gained how do you want to use it what's your career plan yeah sir i want to And become an ipr plan is if your plan is to do yeah the intellectual property relating to say a media or entertainment industry yeah <laughs> then you think of plots relating to media and entertainment yes sir that say there is a very simple thing there is a disc which of lata mangeshkar which somebody yes. wants to say that this is my song whereas actually it is by lata mangeshkar yes yes now sir. it may relate to copyright infringement so how would you mm -hmm. lead this evidence So think of that. Yeah. Uh, so we have next question. It is necessary to call the witness with a formal request, like with full name and all, in the mock trial. Say that again. Yes. It is necessary to call the witness with a formal request, like with full name and and uh, their address or anything. Yeah. you see because uh, of uh, testimony or the evidence of each witness would be recorded so you want to be clear as to who is this witness who has given this evidence so you would like to ask his name his father's name his age maybe his religion where does he stay so you say ki ye falana falana aadmi jo iska ladka hai उमर उसकी चालीस साल है पेशे से शॉपकीपर है और जो श्याम बाजार कलकत्ते में रहता है तो नेचुरली यू शुड राइट डाउन ऑल दिस आइडेंटिफिकेशन 
Uh, okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, so the next question is uh, whether college colleges are bound to do mock trial as per any univers university's norms. They are bound to do mock trials. No, I find. I told you right in the beginning that uh, I was the director at MIT Law School and where I was teaching also from two thousand nine to sixteen, and I found during that time and after two thousand sixteen till now. that very many law colleges it has become fashionable a practice to have moot court i am not impressed with the moot court more useful more beneficial is a mock trial because moot court is only an advocacy which is something like debate that you have done earlier in the 10th and 12th standard only thing is here you keep saying your lordship your lordship and this and that fine so advocacy relates to high court and supreme court but before that advocacy the matter would come to a trial court first and unless you are clear about how a trial takes place you cannot succeed in high court or supreme court by that moot court now the difficulty is that uh, there is in competence if i can use this word i am careful uh, the faculty themselves do not have experience of having faced and seen a court room and therefore mock trials do not take place Uh, sir, your mic is uh, sir, your your mic is muted, sir. Please unmute. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll repeat uh, last what I was talking. It is in the interest of law students that they learn as to how and what would they do when they enter a courtroom. otherwise you will learn this mock trial thing by spending 3 or 4 years of your precious life after getting your law degree then you will learn then you will gain confidence to address the court and to examine a witness my aim is that you learn to do it while in a law college sir so like a um, uh, moot court happens in a national moot court international moot courts so likewise sir mock trial also take place in, at the national or international level the student should take the student should take the initiative if your university or your law college is not doing it then you take the student should take the initiative that we will do this mock trial we have called this lawyer who will sit down there as a judge and tell us our mistake we will say how to proceed say in a dowry case or in a chain a snatching incident or a check bouncing case how the evidence is to be produced how a witness is to be examined it's in your interest so is there to any become a competent law professional yeah yes sir is there any uh, major difference between mock trial and moot court clear. yes sir is there any major difference between mock trial and moot court i said yes there is one very salient major difference in moot court you do not examine a witness you do not produce documentary evidence you only address the court do side hain aap khade ho ke bahas karte ho apni baat court ko batate ho whereas in mock trial you examine a witness you lead evidence you use indian evidence act provisions this is the major difference उसमें खाली आप आर्गुमेंट करते हैं इन मूट कोर्ट यू ओनली आर्गू विच यू वुड हैव डन आई रिमाइंडेड यू अर्लियर ड्यूरिंग द डिबेट इन योर स्कूल डेज देर इज नथिंग अबाउट एग्जामिनिंग अ विटनेस और लीडिंग एविडेंस वेर इज इन मॉक ट्रायल यू लीड एविडेंस यू लर्न व्हाट टेक्स प्लेस इन अ ट्रायल कोर्ट perhaps it is clear now i hope yes sir the next question is is mock trial and moot courts conducted in nlm also llm also 
No, I don't think very many law colleges in India they do mock trial. Hardly anybody does. The reason I told you because who will do? Who will go through all this? And they themselves, the faculty is not experienced. They have not done the trial work. So, आप से करवाएगा कौन? ये आप को करना पड़ेगा जिससे कि law की degree के बाद आप काबियाबी से court में enter कर सकें. And speaking in Hindi, I take it that all of you understand Hindi. Yeah, yes, sir. So, ये ज़्यादा time consuming भी है mock trial मतलब mock mock trial. लेकिन it is लेकिन it is imaginative. Yes. It is exciting. वो तो सब जगह हर जगह moot court हो रहा है. आप भी moot court कर लो. But it will not help you when you enter a magistrate's room or a session judge's room. You will be hesitant. Or any other question? Ah, uh, no, sir. No, there is no more question. If any of the okay. participants have any question, please type quickly or raise their hand. Okay, yeah. then uh, I take it there are no questions. We are like to congratulate you and thank you for yes, organizing sir. this uh, lecture. Yes, sir. Thank And you so much for sparing time. We would have some more. Kindly see to it yes. that the recording of this yes, is shared uh, sure. on YouTube. Yes, sir. Sure. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you so Great much. Thank pleasure. you, sir. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.